Today we will be discussing the states of matter that can be readily found on Earth and that we can interact with on a normal day-to-day -day basis. So to do this, we are going to be making a couple of tables, one for each type of state of matter. And so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and label the top as uh, characteristics and molecular view. These are going to be two of our columns and then our leftmost column will be whatever state of matter that we are currently talking about. So for our first state of matter that we will be discussing, we're gonna be discussing solids. Some characteristics about solids, things that you need to know just really shorthand are going to be that they are not compressible, they have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. That means that we can't make them any smaller, that's what compressibility means. We can't change their shape by putting them in a different container and they aren't going to grow or shrink because we put them in a different container either. Some general characteristics about solids are going to be that my atoms are going to be packed very close together. And atoms are also going to be arranged in a regular pattern. So as you can see here, we have a regular pattern and we have basically no room between my uh, circles which are going to be functioning as our atoms for this. And uh, finally, my atoms cannot move freely. They can't move freely because they don't have the room to move. They are incredibly packed tight, so they don't have the move the room to move around, so therefore they cannot move freely. Some examples of solids that you will run across in your everyday life, ice, uh, your cell phone, a table, pencil, a fork, okay? You can add as many things as you'd like to this list. The list will go on and on and on forever and ever and ever, uh, basically because solids are very, very common in our everyday life and they're very easy to identify. So our next state of matter that we will be discussing are going to be our liquids. Our liquids are going to be barely compressible. That means I can ever so barely get them to squeeze together further, but they're pretty, pretty tight already. They do not have a fixed shape. Okay, you should know this by living in the world that we live in, okay? Liquids, you can pour them from your milk jug into a glass, and it doesn't just pour out in the shape of a milk jug. Instead, it kind of takes the shape of the glass, but it doesn't grow or shrink because you turn, you put it in a different container, okay? So we have a fixed volume, which is why measuring cups are useful, but we do not have a fixed shape, which is why we can pour them out of milk jugs into glasses. Some uh, more expanded characteristics about liquids. We have that my atoms are packed in pretty close together, but not as tightly as solids. So you can see some space around my circles that are representing my atoms here. I also have that my atoms are going to be arranged randomly. We don't have a pattern here. They kind of go where they want. They're going to be in whatever arrangement that they like to be at that particular instance. My atoms can move freely because I do have some space in between the atoms so they can slip and slide past each other, okay? Just like as if this was a room with a lot of people, it might be a little bit difficult, but you can definitely uh, get to the other side of the room. Unlike my solids where you are set, wherever you are, that's where you're gonna have to be because there is no room to move. Uh, and finally, they're going to take the shape of the container that they are in. Again, we are going to pour something out of a milk jug into a glass. We're going to then uh, take whatever shape that thing is. Some examples of some liquids are going to be water, uh, liquid mercury, alcohol. This could be isopropyl alcohol that you use uh, to clean cuts and wounds or alcohol inside of your normal thermometers. And we also have juice and milk. Uh, my next state of matter that we will be talking about is going to be gases. 
for my gases. They are extremely compressible. If you've ever filled up air in your tire, you know that you're going to be using an air compressor to get that, that gas into your tire. It does not have a fixed shape. That's why we're able to walk through it on the daily. If it had a fixed shape, we wouldn't be able to move through it. But unlike my solids and my liquids, gases do not have a fixed volume. That is why we can compress them. We can have, uh, we have so much space in between our atoms of gases that there's lots of room to get them tighter and tighter and tighter. So we can force them to have a different volume. My atoms are gonna be very far apart from my gases and they move around very randomly. So you can see here uh, in my molecular view, my atoms for my gases are very sparse. They're very far away from each other and they're going to take the shape of the container that they are in uh, similar to liquids, but they will also fill whatever container that they are in. So we have here um, our molecular view of our gases. Our circles are kind of randomly placed. They have lots of space in between each other. They can get around wherever they would like to be, no problem at all. So some examples of some gases are going to be oxygen, nitrogen, helium, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. So oxygen and nitrogen, these are going to be our main components of uh, the air that we breathe. We also have carbon dioxide, which is what we exhale whenever we breathe. We have helium that fills up our balloons, and we have water vapor that's gonna be like steam that's gonna be coming off of uh, a boiling pot of water. Last thing that we need to talk about for uh, our states of matter are going to be the relative energy levels for each state of matter. And so we are going to list them from lowest energy to highest energy. And in that order, we have solids at our bottom. They are our least energetic state. They don't have the room to be energetic. And so they kind of just slump in and just kind of fall into line. Then we have liquids. We have a little bit more energy. They start taking up a little bit more room. They have space in between them so they can start moving and getting it going. And finally, we have our gases. We have lots of room to run around and explore our container here. And our gases are going to be our highest energy state of matter.